<laughs> All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're gonna call this meeting of the TRPA Regional Planning Committee to order. The date is Wednesday, May 22nd, 2024, and it is three o'clock. Uh, the first item of the agenda is a roll call to determine quorum. Maria? Ms. Alding? Here. Ms. Diss? Here. Ms. Gustafson? Here. Mr. Hennigman? Here. Ms. Loomer? Here. Mr. Settlemeyer? Here. Mr. Chair, we have a quorum. Thank you. All right, I will now go through the eight page spiel on remote and in-person meeting rules for the day. For the members of the public who are joining us remotely, to observe the meeting, go to trpa.gov. Under the calendar header, click on Governing Board Hybrid Meeting for May 22nd, 2024. There you'll find a link to the public webinar hosted on Zoom. To address committee members directly with your comments, raise your hand in Zoom by clicking the raise hand at the bottom of your screen at the appropriate agenda item. With your hand raised, you will be unmuted by TRPA staff and have three minutes to address the committee. If you've used the dial-in numbers to join us by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand and be unmuted. For items that are agendized as informational only, we will hear public comment during the general public comment period at the end of meeting. For items agendized for action or possible action, we will hear public comment before the committee takes any action. To remote committee members, if you wish to speak, please raise your hand in Zoom. You'll find the hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Remote committee members may not use the chat box to make side comments or to have uh, sidebar conversations. Please everyone remember to mute your mic unless speaking to cut down on background noise. Finally, I'd also like to ask that all remote members turn on their cameras if they're able. Members of the public who have joined us in person, please raise your, raise your hand at the appropriate time for public comment. You'll be called to the front to speak. To ensure that everyone has time to make their desired comment, you can agree with the previous commenter rather than making comments that repeat what others have said. Committee members who are in person, please raise your hand if you wish to comment and speak clearly into the microphone in front of you. If you're viewing the webinar on a personal computer, Please ensure that your microphone and speakers are turned off to prevent audio feedback into the room. If committee members need to ask clarifying questions during the presentation, please do so, but we'll save our deliberations until after the presentation is complete. All right, so our next item is approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? No changes, Mr. Chairman. Great, all right, then we'll deem the agenda approved as posted. And uh, now we're on to agenda item number two, approval of the minutes. We have a set of minutes from the April 24, 2020, from April 24, 2024 on page 53. Do any members of the committee wish to make a change? Looking to my right? No, they were spectacular. Wow, awesome. That is, yeah. I mean, that says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to make a motion, Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, then please make a motion. Uh, I move to approve the minutes of the um, Regional Planning Committee meeting of April 24th, 2024 as presented. Great. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. All right. That brings us to agenda item number three, discussion and possible recommendation for approval of the proposed amendments to the Tourist Core Area Plan Mixed Use Development regarding parcel 029-441-024, City of South Lake Tahoe. Information on this agenda item can be found on page 289 of your packet. As a reminder to the public, after the committee discussion on this item, you may raise your hand in person to be called on in Zoom to be in, or uh, in Zoom to be unmuted by TRPA staff to share your comments. Um, we have received comments only from the league, I believe, on this item. So um, I think that's uh, that's all I saw on this. So um, I'm going to pass it off to Alyssa Bettinger to present. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. I'm Alyssa Bettinger, and I will be introducing the proposed amendment to the Tourist Core Area Plan before I hand it over to John Hitchcock with the city to do the meat of the presentation. Um, as mentioned, this proposed amendment uh, would rezone a portion of a parcel within the TCAP. It is the site of the former Colony Inn. Um, and this amendment has been in the works for a number of years. And I, I would like to thank the city um, and the applicant 
for making a number of revisions um, to the amendment as well as the project itself to address some of the concerns that have been voiced over the years. Um, this is a private property owner uh, initiated amendment with the city. The city council approved the amendment um, back in April and then the APC recommended governing board adoption of the amendment um, earlier this month on May 8th. The, there is a proposed project under the amendment. Um, and if the governing board does approve the amendment, the project would be processed under the city's delegation MOU. So it wouldn't be coming back to TRPA. So um, we recommend today to focus on the amendment itself rather than the project um, to the extent that that you can. Next slide, please. So to zoom in a bit on um, the proposal or the amendment location, uh, this it, the, there's a, a small yellow box um, kind of in the lower right hand side of the map. That is the location of the amendment. Um, there is there used to be two parcels that are that have since been merged. Um, so the back portion of the parcel that's shown in blue here is proposed to be rezoned from recreation to tourist center mixed use. Um, so that blue portion would essentially become pink, um, similar to or the same as the, the front portion of the parcel that exists today. Um, this for reference, um, if, if you aren't familiar, this area is right behind the former Rayleigh Shopping Center. It's off of Montreal. Um, and again, is the, the site of the former Colony Inn Hotel that used to be um, on that pink parcel within the yellow outline. Um, currently, the, the recreation designation allows for single family residential as well as employee housing um, at 15 units per acre. The amendment, um, if it were to go through, it would allow multifamily residential housing on the entirety of the parcel at 25 units per acre. Um, and the resulting project proposes 30 units, um, two of which are proposed to be deed restricted achievable. I will let John get into the kind of more specific details of the project itself. Um, and I also wanna note that there is an SEZ on this site, um, which has been the source of, of a lot of concerns um, in the past. The applicant does have an active application um, in with TRPA and is working with TRPA permitting staff to um, restore that SEZ. Um, and again, I, I will let John um, sort of answer those project level questions. And then we also have the applicant and the consultant here today to answer um, any detailed questions that you have. Uh, next slide, please. I want to point out here that this amendment would only be amending the local area plan. Um, it would not be an amendment to the regional plan maps, policies, or boundaries. Um, so you can see on the left, the map on the left um, is the same as what you saw on the previous slide. That is uh, the map that would, or that is the proposed amendment to the actual area plan itself. Um, on the right, you can see that this the the same parcel is actually already included in the state line ski run town center. So there is no change to the actual um, regional town center boundaries. Um, and we also already classify this um, as or this this whole parcel as tourist um, in our regional land use maps. So um, this you know again would be only a map change or a zoning change to the local area plan, not to um, any TRPA regional plan or maps. Next slide. This amendment may sound familiar to this committee um, because it was before you back in July of 2022. The committee ultimately decided not to take action during that meeting. Um, due to a few concerns that are highlighted here. Um, at the time, the project was proposing, um, or the, the amendment actually was proposing no more than four units per acre. And there was some concern that, um, or some input that, you know, because of the location within a town center that we should be allowing and, and really encouraging higher density residential housing. Um, and so that has since been addressed with, um, you know, the, the four units per acre has been increased all the way up to 25 units per acre. Um, 
this, the SEZ restoration and protection there again has been concerns um, from stakeholders and this, you know, our board and committees um, about that. The again, the applicant has um, an application to restore the SEZ as well as with the project, um, it would provide fencing to protect um, people from entering the SEZ. And then um, there were some concerns that affordable housing was not included in the project. Um, that has since been you know, revised to include a, a couple of units of achievable housing, but um, I will let John uh, get into the details of that. Um, with that, I will turn it over to John. Uh, thank you, Alyssa. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the Regional Planning um, Committee. Um, for the record, John Hitchcock, Planning Manager with the City of South Lake Tahoe. Um, the item before you today is the consideration of an amendment to the tourist core area plan. Next slide, please. Um, the city originally received this application from HVR acquisitions to amend the TCAP in 2019 to rezone two parcels. And I'll be going through different uh, uh, variations of the project description in my presentation. Um, to rezone the two parcels from recreation to tourist center mixed use. Um, one of the parcel is located adjacent to the Van Sickle State Park entrance, and the other is adjacent to what is historically referred to as the Colony Inn parcel. I just want to clarify that the Colony Inn parcel is not part of this amendment. The Colony Inn parcel is already part of the tourist, uh, the tourist core mixed use center. The amendment itself only affects the two parcels that are that are adjacent to Van Sickle, and then also the one that's adjacent to the Colony Inn site. Um, as Alyssa mentioned, if the amendment is successful, the applicant is proposing to develop a multifamily residential um, condominium project on the project site. Um, next slide, please. Um, this figure depicts the proposed, the original proposed amendment, which included the two rec parcels, one that's uh, Jason Van Sickle. If you see the the blue parcel with the word rec on it, that's actually Van Sickle State Park and the entrance to the park. And then adjacent to that is the two private parcels that was it part of the original proposed amendment. Next slide, please. Um, these two rec parcels, they're, they're not open space parcels and they're not green, uh, green space parcels. These parcels actually allow for a variety, variety of different uses. Um, on the parts themselves, including employee housing, single family dwelling, public assembly and entertainment over 300 persons. Um, these are like the event centers, some outdoor amusement, which are things like mini golf course and go-kart tracks, local public health and safety facilities, um, cross country ski courses, day use areas, group facilities and snowmobile courses. Next slide, please. Um, as part of our of the planning process, we did uh, um, participate in an online scoping meeting, and we did receive comments from uh, um, the public, the Leave to Save Lake Tahoe, um, the California Tahoe Conservancy, and the Nevada State Parks. Some of the concerns raised uh, during that scoping session were potential scenic impacts to Van Sickle State Park, impacts to the adjacent uh, um, SEZ that was technically supposed to be restored, and potential encroachment on public lands and potential parking impacts um, to Van Sickle State, Van Sickle State Park. Um, next slide, please. Um, in response to those comments and concerns expressed by the public, as well as our partner um, agencies, the application was revised to remove the parcel Jason to Van Sickle State Park. That parcel will continue to be zone recre recreation. Um, also limit the type of uses in the rezone area to residential, linear public facilities, recreation and resource management uses. So tourist accommodation and commercial uses would not be permissible on the rezone parcel. And then there was also a proposal to reduce the maximum density down to four units per acre. Um, amendment was also incorporated into the city initiated TCAP amendment in order to streamline the amendment, the amendment process. Um, as part of uh, um, revising the part project description, it should also be noted that um, for any potential future project that does come forward on this project, the city will be requiring a visually, visually permeable fence to restrict encroachment on adjacent public lands and on the stream uh, and on the stream environment zone that's located on the the colony the colony, colony site. 
Um, it also should be noted that um, any future project will also have to meet city parking standards, which requires adequate on-site or off-site parking or pursue a use submit permit to reduce the parking demand ratio as provided for in the, in the city code. Um, next slide. This slide, this figure depicts what is current, what the is currently being proposed is to rezone that parcel that is bounded by um, the yellow border from rec to tourist uh, tour center mixed use district. And then we would retain the adjacent parcel as, rec as recreation. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we did present this revised um, project description to the Regional Planning Committee, as Alyssa mentioned, and we also presented to the um, to City Council on June 6, 2023. As during that meeting, the council expressed concerns with the reduction in density in a designated town center and directed staff to remove the minimum density standard and directed staff that we should be supporting higher density uh, in this particular location. Um, they also directed staff to remove the amendment from the city initiated amendment process and proceed on its on its own merits. And that's why we're here before you today. Um, thus, the applicant revised the description a third time to remove that density limitation of four units per acre. So the density that would apply if this amendment is successful would be 25 dwelling units an acre. My next slide, please. The city did complete um, tribal consultation. We didn't receive any uh, um, comment, didn't receive any comments, and we didn't receive any requests for consultation. Um, we did an, um, pair initial study and a negative declaration document and an initial environmental checklist for TRP purposes that was circulated on January 19th through February 26th. Um, the initial study in IEC concluded one impact uh, on parking demand if the project were to be built out at, at, at full build out, and that's parking, uh, and that's the uh, impact on the parking demand ratio. So there is a mitigation measure, measure TRA N-1, which requires the developer to develop an offsite parking plan or submit a parking analysis that supports a reduction in parking. The amendment itself, as Alyssa mentioned, was adopted by the city by the city city council. The APC recommended approval on May 21st. Um, the proposed amendment itself is consistent with the goals and policies of the tourist core area plan, as well as the city general plan and the city's housing element to direct high density housing projects on sites in town centers and in close proximity to transit, pedestrian infrastructure, and public amenities. And with that, includes my presentation, and then I can answer any questions. Thank you. Great, thank you both. Um, any, all right, James. Hey, Mr. Chairman, I was kind of curious. The parcel, if I'm correct, though, the entrance to the Van Sickle by State Park is actually partly on this private parcel. Correct. That's correct. There's an ease. They have an easement through a, a small sliver of the parcel that's adjacent to Van Sickle State Park. Okay. I guess that's just one of my concerns because that easement can be moved around a little bit, correct? They could, or will that always be in perpetuity at that particular location? Because currently it lines up with the other roads, so it kind of makes some sense. And I guess a concern of mine would be, are they looking to try to alter said entrance, which then could have significant impacts to the Bi-State Park? I don't believe there's any plans to alter that entrance. Um, I don't have the easement language um, uh, with me, but that particular parcel is not part of this amendment and is not affected by this amendment. Because it's now been left out, but originally it was, correct? Originally it was. And that's probably what their concern from some of my uh, staff was. Thank you. Any other committee member comments? I was just gonna ask if there's a response to the um, some of the uh, issues that were raised in the letter we received from the league. We did provide responses uh, to the league in the um, in our response to comments in the final initial study negative dec declaration. There were comments um, about the intended uh, restoration of the site. And I'm not sure if that was both sites or the other site. I'm just not mm -hmm. clear, but I, I can let them. Yeah. I can, I'm sure Gavin is on and he can speak to that to clarify. Yeah, I can take a shot at it and I can also turn it over to Alyssa. The, so the Colony Insight, when um, when the project was um, demolished, 
um, as part of the TRPA permit to transfer the tourist combination units off that site to, uh, to another project required that that site be restored and maintained in its natural state. Um, the restoration was approved by TRPA um, and then the security deposit was returned. However, it turns out that the restoration was not, was not affected. It failed. Okay. Are you? I'm still, I'm even more confused, but. Um... Yeah. So I, maybe we're trying to. Yeah. Ask so the other we... It's kind of confusing because no one's shown where the development's gonna go and whether it's on one parcel, two parcels, three parcels. Um, where the SEZ is exactly how they they relate, so it's kind of hard without without an under spatial understanding um, to see what's really going on. I think that, I, that that's been missing in it. Uh, yeah, that's, I didn't think there was any any diagram in there. It's on page two ninety nine. Yeah, yeah your diagram. Yeah, if you go if you go to page two ninety six of the. Oh, I see. Okay. So three, which is not going to be touched. Yeah. It's still recreation. Okay. Yeah. I see. So most of the development will be on the old colony in site and uh, with a portion of it being on the site that is being rezoned. Is that, 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 is, that is correct. And then the SCZ restoration that was required as part of the demolition of uh, um, the colony in site is that SCZ portion to the right of the parcel. I'm sorry, to the right of the high capability portion. Um, so, John, obviously the prior efforts to restore the SEZ failed. Do you know why they failed? Is there not a source of water? Uh, That's and, correct. And how is this attempt going to be successful where the previous attempt failed? I will defer to uh, Mr. Wishmeyer. He's been um, he's been in discussions with TRPA staff on how to, um, to re-restore the extreme environment zone, but it's my understanding Due to in, in due to inside channel, the water wasn't basically overflowing the banks in order to keep the metal wet, and that's why it failed. Okay, is that a relatively easy fix? And there are are there water rights? I mean, who owns the water that's going to be used to restore the SEC? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, yes. Wait, no. Um, the uh, I think we we can hear from the project proponent in terms of what they're planning for the SEZ restoration that was worked out with Paul Nielsen, our planner, who unfortunately is not here right now uh, to answer some technical questions as to the SEZ restoration. But I believe it's increasing the ability of to slow the water, uh, kind of to talk. And Lisa is shaking her head. Yes. Um, so uh, to spread it out and and infiltrate more of it. Um, so that was what, unfortunately, the first go round was. It was not successful at doing that. Where is the water coming from, John? Do you have? I know? think it's just natural runoff from up above. From yeah. So it's that, seasonal, yes. basically. Okay. Yeah, it's natural runoff, seasonal from um, um, from. The ridge, ridge lines. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from Alex? A couple. So, so I'm just trying to catch up. I'm confused. The parcel was supposed to be permanently retired. Yes. In the deed restriction that was recorded for the parcel for the transfer of the, the tourist units off the site. All the deed restrictions said that the, the site was to be restored and left in its natural state. There was no mention of, of retiring the site or the parcel. Okay, so left in its natural state. So we, I guess we didn't really, I know I've driven by this, but I can't picture it in my head. We haven't really seen a picture of what it looks like now. Do we have a picture that we could? A, a, picture, a picture of the site? Yeah. Um, I don't think we included one in the, oh, we do, page, uh, oh, perfect. page cool. 299. So it's, I mean, maybe not exactly in its natural state. There's some, at least in this picture, <laughs> there's 
uh, construction stuff on the ground, but generally it's in its natural state now. Well, yeah, it's 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 in its natural state. It's just not a functioning SEZ, which was the requirement of the TRPA permit. Gotcha. But it sounds like that's feasible. Yes. Okay. And then I was just hoping I haven't had a chance to talk to staff about this, but I'd just be curious if staff could speak how to how this rezoning would support TRPA's goals and policies. Yeah, in general, we you know we want to see development in our town centers. It this parcel, the whole parcel, um, is right now within the town center boundary. So. Um, from our perspective, it the, the amendment is in you know in line with our regional plan goals and policies of encouraging development in town centers. But it would be development of what is currently open space. Um, it's not open space. It's zone rec. It's zone recreation. Okay. If it, if this was zone open space, uh, this amendment wouldn't be before you. Recreational space that it, is open. Yeah, it's it's undeveloped. It's okay. undeveloped right now, but it's not a des designated open space or de designated green space, as the term used by uh, um, the, the League to Save Lake Tahoe. Gotcha. And then, in terms of just you know trying to help achieve our affordable housing goals, you mentioned that has kind of been addressed. Could you just speak to how many affordable units will be part of this? Um, the what applicant percentage? is the applicant is proposing two achievable two two achievable units. So no actual technical affordable housing, just achievable with no income cap. Not yeah, not in this, not in this proposal. And it would be two out of how many units? Uh, out of thirty. Okay, thank you. Any other committee member questions? Or I, I unfortunately I didn't have a chance to read the league's letter. I must have left the office before I received it in my inbox. Um, but I do remember the conversation that we had in twenty two, and. Um, it had to do with the transfer of development rights to the Biltmore, I believe, wasn't it? Whatever iteration of the Biltmore uh, it was at the time. Um, so is a league's position that, that uh, is there a deed restriction on this property that would have to be removed? There, there, is, there is a deed restriction on the property that um, essentially states that, um, that the SCZ portion has to be left in its, nat in its natural state. Okay, but the balance of what's represented here on 299, I mean, the cross hatching is the SEZ, as I understand it on this Correct. aerial, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other two, I've just kind of highlighted them for my own purposes, but the other two, the potential building site and the approved building site, those are not encumbered by the deed restriction. Is that correct? The, um, yeah, the portion that's being rezoned is not, in, is not encumbered by that deed, restri that deed restriction. And the SCZ that's on the back portion is it has not been disturbed. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank but you. But the what about the port the part of the property that is not in the SEZ that is supposed to be being developed um, on the former colony in site, that is not also encumbered by a deed restriction from the transfer of those rights? That portion is all, all, all the colony insight. Um, okay, the whole colony the whole, insight yeah. was encumbered. Is encumbered to be left as it was. So, um, well, um, let me clarify or, that. Yeah, I get, that's yeah. the confusing part, and I think that's the league's primary yeah. point is is that site was traded, and now we're we're kind of ignoring that fact. So. How are we ignoring it? How are we well uh, interpreting that? I guess so. The way the way we are interpreting it is that the deed restriction required the restoration of the SEZ and the SEZ to be left in its nat in its natural state, but the deed restriction didn't encumber that the whole parcel would be would be retired. There's no mention of retirement anywhere in TRPA's deed restriction in the city resolution where the city. Um, approved the transfer, allowed um, to, the applicant to move the units of use out of our jurisdiction over into uh, um, Washoe County. There's a mention in our resolution that talked about the site being retired. But I think the intent of the city council time there was basically, we're going to allow these TAUs to be transferred as long as you 
um, restore the SEZ pursuant to the TRPA's requirements through their permitting process. Okay, thanks for that clarification. So one more thing. So the applicant, this is getting into the project. So the applicant, basically, it's not a violation of the deed restriction if if TAUs are transferred back onto the old colony inside. Right? Um, so that's correct, because any right. transfer would have to be transferred back onto the high capability portion. And there is still there's still development development rights still associated with the parcel that are banked on the parcel that will be used. Okay. And I, I had one more question, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Does the city have an affordable housing requirement or work achievable? Or? Yes, we have an inclusionary housing ordinance. And actually, um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, um, the two units would meet that would meet that standard. Okay. So it's not a 10% uh, requirement, which would be three units. It's it, um, some other formula yes. that you're using. Okay. Correct. Thank you. So the city requirement is for less than 10% and achievable, not even affordable. I, I wanted to ask, that was one of my issues was how you got to that number. Um, we've been you know, looking at at least 10% achievable in the other projects that we've been, we've been uh, permitting. So um, yeah, it seems seven, seven or 8% seems uh, a little, a little skimpy, but well, the, the city's inclusion housing ordinance um, actually actually either requires and requires an app uh, developed to either build units or pay pay an in lieu pay an in lieu fee. Um, I don't have the ordinance right before me, so I can't tell you exactly what that what that percentage is. So they may be building two and then doing an in lieu fee for the third. Well, we can ask the applicant. <laughs> okay. It's it's gonna it's gonna depend on what they propose. If they propose units that are less than two thousand square feet, which I believe they are, then the inclusion housing ordinance does not apply. Strange. <laughs> well, the city's our our approach. At least we're trying we're trying to go after this concept of affordable by by design, and we're trying to encourage smaller units. Hence the um. The cap at two thousand square feet, where we yeah. basically exempt uh, developers from um, paying the fee or or doing um, in lieu housing units. Okay, but whatever's being proposed meets the city's requirements for affordable yes. housing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other committee member comments or questions? No. Quickly, um, yeah. I I mean I I definitely have concerns just about developing on space and then doing it for the sake of a bunch of condos with two achievable units. Um, you know, I think most of us, if not all of us on the board are really, really supportive of more affordable housing. And I think for me personally, that's a huge priority. And this really doesn't seem to be doing much to add to that. Um, not, you know, criticizing the city, but would encourage you to consider doing more for affordable housing units in these developments. Um, would be interested to hear from the league. I think they're probably going to provide comments, but um, I don't think I can support this. I mean, I would like to see, I would like to see 10% just because that's what we've been uh, wrestling out of other people around the lake. Um, it's one more unit. Um, they are not deed restricted. They're just full-time residents. So the financial burden of it is, is not, gigantic i mean we've been i think our new proposal is 10 percent affordable and that's a that's a very different um cost burden um i guess the other thing is that you know i, I is there any restriction on um you know the uh, certificate of occupancy being conditioned on the sez being restored or a bond or something being put in place to ensure that 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 work happens before um, before the project's over. I don't, and I'm trying to defer, defer to Mr. Marshall here, but I don't know if there's a linkage between the zoning amendment and the requirement for the restora restora restoration or the project and, and the restoration of the CZ. The applicant is committing to doing the restoration and the city appreciates that. Um, I also would like to um, 
comment on kind of the, the city strategy for affordable housing. And we're in the we're in the thick of it right now in developing affordable housing. And because of the cost and the subsidies that are required to build affordable housing, the city's strategy is basically working with um, affordable housing developers to build affordable housing rather than relying on private developers who build market rate units to meet our affordable housing demand. You know, we have Sugar Pine Village that's coming online 200 and 240 or so units. Um, the first phase will be uh, will be occupied this uh, this fall. Um, we're also proposing another 70 unit affordable housing project on 3900 Lake Tahoe Boulevard, which will hopefully start construction um, next year. And so that's kind of the strategy where the city's uh, taking to meet our affordable housing needs and also meet our arena numbers. And also keep in mind, our arena numbers also has above moderate units, um, actually totaling 127 units. And right now we're sitting at about 67. So we still have 60 to go to meet our arena targets for above market units. All right, thank you. Any other questions or comments? So I'm request to clarify. Um, John, the deed restriction um, requires obviously that this area that appears in as hatched uh, on page 299 remain in open space because it's an SCC and not be developed. In the deed restriction, is there a an obligation to restore it? Because then that would be, obviously, it would be um, incumbent upon the new owner to take on that responsibility, even though it failed in the past. So the deed restriction, um, item I, um, it states, as a condition of the above reference TRP approvals, chapter 51 of the Sheriff Code of Ordinances requires that an appropriate deed restriction be recorded against the sending parcel, documenting the transfer of the TAUs from the sending parcel to the receiving parcel, and that the sending parcel be restricted to reflect the use remaining thereon. The deed restriction must likewise document that the structure facility accounting for the existing use on the sending parcel shall be or has been removed or mod modified and these and the land restored and maintained in as natural a state as possible as to eliminate the transferred development. So natural state right now, it's dry. So, I mean, it could be argued that during certain times of the year, that's its natural state. So, and that deed restriction was recorded by TRPA, so it would be incumbent upon this agency to enforce it. I mean, what, what is the agency's position on that, John? I mean, um, if we can't get something, in other words, if we can't get a, a, a condition of, if the city is not willing to, to enforce some sort of, of requirement uh, prior to issuing the permit, uh, that the SEZ be successfully restored, then what are our, ob our obligations or our options as TRPA? Um, a couple fold, but let's first set aside the zoning decision, which is in front right. of you now Absolutely. versus project approval, which under our delegation, the city will take the first crack at it. If it's appealed, then it comes to the governing board. Right. Um, we can work with the city uh, to make certain that, and I'm certain the applicant will agree in uh, to link the um, restoration of the SEZ with approval of their multifamily uh, development in the first instance. Um, and so we can work at it that way. If we can't get it, uh, then we can look at enforcing the deed restriction itself. Okay. That issue, though, is a little difficult because of the bit of the tortured history associated with the, you know, we signed off on the SEZ restoration as complete, returned, final the inspection, and then it failed. Um, so we have a little bit, we've got to figure out, you know, look at the best, most efficient way of, of uh, getting the SEZ restored, which is the main uh, Objective. Okay, so so it sounds to me like the best approach is through a cooperative effort. Yes. Between TRPA, the city, and the applicant. Correct. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Jessica? Anything? Nope. Okay. Well, then, hearing hearing. No um, I guess we will go to um, public comment on this item. If any member of the public wishes. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Applicant first. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
Um, yeah, if you guys would like to present. Thank you so much for the record. My name is Nick Exlein. There was a lot of questions. I was actually hoping to be a bit briefer today, um, in fairness to all your calendars and get out. But I think in fairness to the project and the effort, uh, Mike Wishmeyer has gone through the collaboration with the city and, and TRPA. I understand in front of you today is the actual zoning amendment. I think you asked an excellent question. And I really want to answer that more thoroughly and you know add a little kind of detail and some cleanup in some of the, the statements that weren't exactly correct. Um, and so, you know, really, I think the question you would ask is really at the heart of this issue. How is this addressing TRPA and city goals? And it's doing it in a lot of different ways. And we'll get into affordable housing as one of those. So the first is SEZ restoration. And I think uh, Mrs. Aldean asked an excellent question. How are we going to guarantee this moves forward? Mr. Wishmeyer is going to come up in a second. He's going to explain his journey in terms of SEZ restoration and bringing it forth. And so this is something he's adamantly moving forward with, working with TRPA, reached agreement with Mr. Nielsen, years of testing to get to the place so we didn't... Uh, go forth with an incorrect solution as we did in the past. And so all of that's progressing. All that moves forward with the actual approval and development of the project. And we have no problem tying these things together and bringing forth that collaborative effort. And so what's so important with the SEZ restoration, this effort, I would say, is the collaboration. Because as you look to meet TRPA goals and overall uh, SEZ restoration goals, we have to be very cognizant of the fact, where are we going to get the money? How are we going to finance these things? So anytime you can bring forth large scale SEZ restoration in an important spot like this, utilizing private capital is incredibly exciting and something to bring forth TRPA goals, policies, and water quality um, direction, things we need to start to, to leverage within our community, in our South Shore community. Um, I think another really important element obviously is deed restricted housing. I think the entirety of the basin and in particular the city of South Lake Tahoe uh, is suffering with a housing shortage. And so one of the interesting things that we had to get into in terms of the, the actual unit count, um, you know, the 30 units to the two units, it's to some degree a tad misleading. And so what took place, if you drive out there right now uh, and you take a look, Sports LTV would be to your right. The, the project site would be to your left. What you would see right now is uh, building foundations kind of in their, their commencement of construction and uh, an existing transformer station from uh, the utility company. So this is, you know, as we talk about natural state, obviously we were referring to the SEZ, but as you look at the site, it is a, an industrial looking site right in the heart of our tourist core. So from a scenic perspective, as we get into scenic and granted Montreal is not a scenic corridor, but as we think about scenic and the things we want, uh, we want to institute here at TRPA and as a local community, we would have to screen that. If I came forward with this body, uh, be another project and I propose to put mechanical on a, equipment on a roof, I'm gonna have to screen that. And so what Mr. Wishmeyer is doing forth with this project is actually screening uh, those kind of uh, mechanical industrial uses, thereby improving the scenic integrity from what currently exists. So that's incredibly important. So right now we're talking about SEZ restoration. We're talking about scenic improvement. As we get into deed restricted housing, really the area Michael Wishmeyer, you know, the 18 units of the 12 have already been approved and commenced. Michael Wishmeyer, in some ways, and he'll describe through his process, is kind of a dog chasing his tail. Because every time he is asked, in one instance, he was asked to reduce density, other instances, he's asked to increase. So the, the 18 unit project, that's already moving forward. That's already in construction. You can see those foundations out there today. So really, as we're looking at affordable housing, it's not the 30 units, it's what are we fitting on this back partial that we're that can't afford, uh, can't have development today uh, in this regard that we're now bringing forth. And that's the two units. So it's not two out of 30, it's two out of 12. So as you look at that, that exceeds the 10% as, uh, as I saw before the APC the other day, in exceedance of the TRP, or excuse me, the city requirements, and in exceedance of anything I've seen through any juris local jurisdiction in the Tahoe Basin currently as we look at it in that context. And so what we're working with is the hand we're dealt given this reality. So again, it's not the entirety of the project, it's just those 12 units. And again, those 12 units in, in looking in that context, in the context of what we can control with what are working and plan revision with the city, that's what we're bringing forward. And we can only bring forward now those new elements in this new area and things that have already been under construction. You know, you know how that is, uh, doing some home remodeling myself. So you're kind of locked in. And so those are really important elements. And so, you know, you start to talk about these things. So when looking in that context, we're actually exceeding the housing elements with what we can control today and what will be approved via this amendment. Um, other really important elements, we talked about SEZ, water quality, those elements, and Michael Wishmeyer talk a lot about those. Well, 
The city does not have the money to st install the water quality improvements we need in our streets and our roads. And not even like they're a little short. They are really, really short. You, you know better than I. This project in a large section, approximately 200 feet, linear feet in front of Montreal, not required by the project. I don't have a PowerPoint in front of me, but is installing private water quality improvements along Montreal within our tourist core, a budding uh, recreational use that I, I personally use very, very frequently. Right. And so as you look at TRPA goals, we're now not only addressing water quality through SEZ restoration, we're addressing it through private funded uh, street improvements that will improve water quality flow and function in an area where it's sorely needed in the city of South Lake Tahoe. Again, with private capital, the city doesn't have the money. We're not going to get the money. So we need to leverage our ability to work with private developers to start to bring forward these things. And this is a great project. We need to, we need to support people advancing things that aren't required while exceeding the numbers that are brought that are required from them. In addition, you know, in terms of the condos, you no, know, I agree. You know, as we look at the South Shore and in, in the business mix, and as I exist in many hats in that, that community, we have to look at the community mix. We want high density. We want people staying and vacationing as well in our tourist core. It's called the tourist core, right? For, an, for a reason, right? We want those people walking. We want those people recreating. My friend that's a waiter is, is, is Azul. He wants those people leaving nice tips, right? These are, the, these are the community factors that really exist. Those people can now exist in that area and then walk, utilize transit, get to our other amenities and exist and enjoy the transit benefits that this community and TRPA uh, and your leadership has really started to bring forth. So, you know, as we look at those elements, I think um, it's, it's exceedingly important. You know, there's really no nexus between uh, Van Sickle State Park whatsoever. I bike there a lot. You can look at their old trail map. There is no connectivity whatsoever. So there'll be no issue or no um, anything put upon the existing Van Sickle State Park. You know, as we look to, you know, the efforts made in 2012 with the regional plan update and the city taking the lead, this was approved by the city for the reasons I cited today. They understand they don't have the money. They don't understand they don't have developers bringing forth private capital for SEZ, water quality, and deed restricted housing. So it was approved by the planning commission. It was approved by the city council. And as Mr. Hitchcock's presentation outlined, the, the applicant has at every single step has exceeded everything that has ever asked from him. And at the end, the carpet is taken out. And so with this, it now exceeds everything required in private capital for all the improvements TRPA looks for that a lot of developers skate that this individual has been now working on for four years to bring forth. So in the context of that project, and sorry, I was a bit long-winded, but I think it was really important to kind of set the stage for how this all came to be. Um, it's a really important project. It's a, for all the elements I cited. I'm, I'm available for questions. Um, I know Ms. Mike Wishmeyer wanted to speak to kind of his SEZ journey. Let me let me just ask one question to clarify in my mind. So the 12 units are going on the new property that would be rezoned. They're already building 18 units on the original property with the SEZ, the colony in site. That's correct. Not obviously in the SEZ. Not in the SEC, yes. yeah, on that on that portion that is is not SEC. around where the utility yeah. is, yeah, correct. Okay, great. I yeah, the 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 materials I don't know because it's had such a long convoluted history were a little bit confusing, I think. So it was hard to get an idea what's going on, but that's uh, very helpful. Thank you. No, and as I got into it with Mr. Wishmeyer, it took me a while myself, so uh, I completely understand. And sorry if I miss it. What's your role in the project? Oh, sorry. I, I should have introduced myself uh, better. My name is Nick Exline. I uh, land use planning consultant here uh, based in South Lake Tahoe. And so, you know, working with Mike Wishmeyer and really my engagement was brought forth because, you know, he wanted assistance kind of navigating this process because, again, it's a local investor um, looking to bring forward. And, and one other quick element, and I know it's not before this body, but in terms of the local realities, in terms of the community, the Measure T, and I'm sure everybody's familiar with this, this is exactly what we wanted. Like as a community, we wanted people centralized in an area where they could be utilizing transit. This is what that was looking to bring forward. So it's that meets adding affordable housing plus the environmental improvements. And that's why, you know, from the Planning Commission to the City Council, it was supported. Great, thank you. Thank you. Did, do you want to speak as well? As well, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Regional Planning Committee members, my name is Michael Wishmeyer and I'm the owner developer. I'm a proud 25 year local to this neighborhood and I'm generally excited about this project. This project is going to bring well needed visual relief to the tourist core. Over the past five years, I've actively collaborated with the city, the TRPA and our local community to ensure this project aligns with shared goals. 
The TRPA regional plan emphasizes reducing vehicle miles traveled, incentivizing walkability. The city has a tourist core area plan. This plan outlines a vision for the future of the tourist core. Its plan offers more guidance than both the South Lake Tahoe general plan and the 2012 TRPA regional plan. Its primary goal is the revitalization of the tourist core. This concentrated area focuses on redevelopment, achieving better energy use, lowering the carbon footprint, reducing the vehicle miles traveled, alleviating vehicle congestion, and minimizes traffic on city streets. The tourist core area plan serves as a catalyst to transform existing conditions into opportunities of redevelopment. This area we're talking about is 0.6 of an acre. It borders a massive substation. It's inaccessible to the public. It lies directly behind an already approved development. This parcel is situated in the tourist core area plan, aligning with the TRPA and city's desire for density, walkability to key amenities such as the gondola, transit hub, lake, downtown, and casinos. I'm enthusiastic about the positive impact this project will have on our community. The SCZ restoration journey, what happened, the progress. In 2020, I learned the Tahoe Regional Planning Agency had deemed the 2013 SCZ restoration efforts a failure. While I had no knowledge that this was even failing, I believed it was in everyone's best interest using my own funds to ensure a functional SEZ rather than allowing it to become a desolate dust bowl. Due to the disruptions caused by COVID-19 pandemic, it wasn't until 2021 that I could reconnect with TRPA representative Paul Nielsen on site to assess the situation. Together, we concluded that we needed to understand the reasons for the failure before formulating a restoration plan. I engaged in three engineering and environmental service companies, ultimately selecting hydrologist David Hagen and soils expert geologist David Herzog. The next steps were to observe a full year seasonal cycle of water flow to gain comprehensive insights. However, setbacks arose in 2021 with the Caldor fire. Cal fire stored heavy Amtrak equipment on the restoration site resulting in significant damage. In 2022, it was determined that the cause of the restoration failure was the flow ditch wasn't elevated sufficiently in the original restoration to overflow and saturate the restoration area. Instead, erosion of the flow ditch restricted the overflow, leading to minimal water reaching the restoration site. In 2023, we installed piezometers to monitor soil moisture levels and understand water circulation patterns. In June of the same year, we submitted an application to the TRPA for repair work including light grading and the installation of a check dam. However, TRPA, TRPA's response time for applications is six months. In November of 2023, a meeting was convened on site with me, David Hagen, David Herzog, and TRPA representatives, Paul Nielsen, Trevor Smith, and Allison Borowski. We collectively affirmed that we had the right team and plan for the restoration with plans to revisit the application in May 2024, this month, the beginning of the grading season. At present, I am eagerly awaiting the TRPA's approval to proceed with the restoration efforts, and I'm fully prepared to mobilize as soon as the green light is given. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, um, any questions for Mike? No? All right, then I guess we'll uh, move on to public comment. All right, all right. Um, if any member of the public wishes to address the committee on this agenda item, please raise your hand now, either in person um, or by clicking the raise hand button at the bottom of your Zoom screen or by dialing star nine on your phone and you'll be called on and unmuted by a TRPA staff member. Anyone in the room? Doesn't look like it. So anyone online? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We have one hand raised so far. Uh, Gavin Feiger, please unmute to make your comment. Hello, good afternoon, Regional Planning Committee. Uh, sorry I wasn't able to stay at the meeting all day today. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanna cover a few points. I know a few of you read our letter, um, some of you haven't. It's very similar as to what we've been submitting since November of 2020 when this project was first proposed. Um, I will say we are happy to see the developer uh, taking on the SEZ restoration because in 2021, um, it was that was not the case. It was not on the table. So we're really glad to see that that progression. That said, um, maybe whether or not the Colony Inn project was supposed to be developed is up 
to interpretation. Um, you know, that project is already underway. As I said, the foundations are in. Um, I linked a resolution, city resolution from 2008 that I will just read it really quickly. Um, once a colony inn is demolished, this is a whereas within the resolution. Once a colony inn is demolished, existing development will be transferred out of the SEZ and the site, the entire site will be restored and permanently retired, thereby furthering the goals of the state line ski run community plan and attainment of TRPA's thresholds. In the staff report for that resolution, continues to say that it is adjacent to the proposed Van Sickle State Park site and CTC may be interested in acquiring the property to improve access to the park property. So it is right there next to Van Sickle. Clarification on green space, we were not using that in our letter and our communications as a zoning designation, but as a description of the site. Um, they are zoned, rec those parcels are zoned recreation um, or the one parcel, the back parcel in question today. The developer knew there was owned recreation when he purchased it. And very simply in front of you today is a question of whether or not to rezone recreation, the, the one of the last three remaining recreation zone parcels in the entire tourist core area plan, um, rezone that for short-term rentals. Um, fundamentally, that's a question in front of you. We don't think um, our interpretation is that the site never should have been allowed to be developed to start with. And we would like to see no further development um, on the back parcel. So I know you guys want to be out of here by four and I'll leave it with that. Thank you, Gavin. Anyone else online? Mr. Chair, there are no other hands raised to comment. All right, then we'll close public comment. Um, any staff comment following up on the discussions? Anything you guys want to say? Um, yes. Um, so the parcel that's being rezoned, then it was never intent that that parcel was not to be developed. I mean, it is zone recreation, and there's a slew of uses that that are that are permissible on the site today. And so, um, I don't think the TCAP ever intended rec space to be left in an open space or in a or in a green space, as as, as Gavin. Um, as Gavin noted, and the underlying TRPA um, general regional plan designation is tourist, and so the zoning amendment of itself is consistent with the underlying general plan designation. All right, thank you. Uh, Shelly? Uh, John, when was the tourist core area plan adopted? After 2008, the date of the resolution? Yeah, it was 20, um, 2013. 2013. 2013. So it was after the resolution. Typically, resolutions are non-binding. I mean, that was a, st a statement, I'm assuming, and a statement of intent, kind of aspirational. From the city. Yes. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. And, and that parcel, I mean, that's underway. So what really, I mean, the only focus is on whether we rezone this that is parcel from record. That, that is correct, Chairman. Uh, the, the front parcel has always been in the... Tom Center mixed use district where multifamily residential condominium is permitted at 25 dwelling units an acre. Yeah, and its development's already underway. So it's really just a question of 12 units on this site. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, any other comments or questions? No, none? All right. Then I um, need a motion to uh, re re approve the required findings. Uh, including a finding of no significant effect for the adoption of promote the proposed tourist core area plan amendments as provided in attachment B. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend TRPA governing board uh, approve of the required findings, including a finding of no significant effect for adoption of proposed tourist core area plan amendments and as provided in attachment D. All right, thank you. Um, Mario, do you want to do roll call? Ms. Alding. Yes. Ms. Gustafson? Yes. Ms. Diss? Let's circle back, Ms. Diss. Uh, Ms. Loomer? Yes. Mr. Settlemeyer? Yes. Mr. Honigman? Yes. And Ms. Diss? Mr. Chair, that motion does pass. Okay, thank you. So now uh, we need a second motion to recommend the- 
to your you want to just do it? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I have to recommend TRPA Governing Board adoption of Ordinance 2024 amending Ordinance 2022 02, as previously amended, to amend the Tourist Core Area Plan to include the additions and revisions as provided in Attachment B. Great. Thank you, Shelley. Maria? Mr. Settlemeyer? Yes. Ms. Loomer? Yes. Ms. Gustafson? Yes. Ms. Dis? Ms. Alding? Yes. Mr. Hedigman? Yes. Mr. Chair, the motion passes. All right, thank you. Um, thank you guys for coming and uh, thank you Gavin for, for staying with us uh, all day as well for your comments. Um, all right, that brings us to agenda item four, upcoming topics. As a reminder to the public, since this item is informational only, members of the public are welcome to comment at the final public comment item. So John? I will make this quick since I have about 10 seconds. Um, we have some information presentations coming scheduled in June from Douglas County around the Barton Health District area plan amendment. And uh, I believe the other one is ar around there. Um, accepting the other one is around there, the, the uh, changing their plan and code to uh, prove the health, I mean, the housing amendments we made in late fall. I'm looking at a little bit of a dated sheet, so I hope that's right, but that's what I think is coming next month. Okay. It's general generally directional statement of what might be before us. All right, great, thank you. <laughs> uh, anyone have any questions or comments on that? All right, um, then we'll move on with the agenda item uh, as this was informational only. So we're on agenda item number five, committee member comments. Any committee members have comments? Nope. All right, uh, then we will move on to our last item. Our final matter of business is our general public interest comment period. Any member of the public wishing to address the Regional Planning Committee on any item listed or not listed on the agenda may do so at this time. Individuals or groups who have already commented on items listed on the agenda are not permitted to comment on that same topic. The Regional Planning Committee is prohibited by law from taking immediate action on or discussing items raised by the public during this comment public period. All right, so any, there is absolutely no one in the room. We have worn everyone out. Uh, anyone online? Mr. Chair, there are no hands raised online to comment. All right, then we will close public comment. And then our next agenda item is uh, adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? All right, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? All right, motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>